In this video, I will show you how to use uh, scikit-learn for random forests and to predict hand gestures in real-time video using OpenCV, so that will be kind of cool. It's not very frequent that you see scikit-learn apply to real-time video, so um, I think this is kind of a unique approach. Uh, as you will see, it has some, uh, some errors, but overall the approach works really well. So basically the idea is the following. So uh, I will provide the hand gestures for, for example, the pistol, and then I will do a peace symbol, and then I will do a hang loose symbol. Sorry, my camera is rotated there. So hang loose. I will say hi to the camera. And I will put a fist here. Oh, sorry, my camera is rotated. So uh, I will show you how to do this. Uh, this is part of a series of videos that I provide in Udemy. So there you will find the code and the images that I use for training. Here you will find just uh, an explanation uh, about how, how we can do this. So p please use the link uh, below on this video to find the appropriate, um, the appropriate coupon for that, uh, which has a huge discount. In this video, I will use random forests uh, to classify hand gestures in real-time video also using OpenCV, which is actually quite, kind of a weird thing because we would typically expect um, to see convolutional neural networks in real-time video processing. But anyway, one of the fundamental drawbacks, and I think the most important one, is that because we are not applying a convolution filter at any point in this training procedure, we we might have a, a minor problem in terms of where the hand is appearing in the screen. Because we don't have a pooling operator that we are applying, such as the one we are using when we're doing convolutions in, in, neural, in uh, neural networks uh, using, for example, Keras. So, for example, the standard convolutional neural network has typical, typically two or three convolutions with, with at least one or two max poolings. So we co because we don't have convolutions and max poolings here, the position where the hand is appearing is super important. So I will kind of assume that the hand will appear at the middle, except when I am doing the pistol symbol that I am, for example, doing here and here and here. It will kind of appear on the right part of the screen or the right part of the image. So let's see how an image looks like. So these are white, black and white images. You can see that I have um, transformed them into pixels. Actually, not very big images anyway. So uh, essentially, I will exploit this white and black uh, structure. I will map everything accordingly um, into just one row. I will show you how I do that for every image. Then I will stack everything together. I will train that using a random forest and then I will load real time video which actually uh, doesn't sound so complicated. So you can see that for every image, I have an underscore and the class. And for example, here, when I have the open hand, it always ends with zero. When I have the fist, it always ends in two. When I have the hang loose symbol, it ends with three. So I will use that last digit to build the um, corresponding labels that I will use. So you can see that I have so many images here that it will be actually impossible to analyze um, all of these one by one. So I will need an automatic class for mapping everything. So I have a specific class that I call matrix underscore CVML that will loop through all the elements here and it will transform every image into just one row of the following dimensions. So if I have an image of, let's say, 100 by 133, or 130, I will transform this into one row and 100 by 130 columns. So you can see that I'm destroying the locality property of the image. 
and I'm just putting everything into one row. You can think that every column right now will represent to me uh, an, an, a new feature. So every pixel is a, fe is a feature, basically. So that's pretty much what I am doing. So um, let's see the final output and then we can expect uh, the, specifically what's going on. So the output will be created this way. So every, every image uh, will first obviously be loaded here and a random forest classifier will be uh, estimated. You can see that I don't care very much about the depth. Ideally, I would like to use grid search here with uh, cross-validation to determine the appropriate parameters. But anyway, let's just assume that 3 is a reasonable value. And then I will compute the mean uh, error that I'm getting, or the mean accuracy, in other words. And then I'm using the video capture in OpenCV. And while this all is true, I will pull the values. I will convert everything here to the HSV scale. I will filter everything that is lies between these two colors, which is the human skin. And then I am applying a mask and I am keeping only the human skin parts in the image. Then I am running an algorithm that I call fill blacks, which fills the black pixels by white pixels. So remember that pixels here are in OpenCV are, well, not in OpenCV, in images, are always something that is bounded between 0 and 255. So if there is a certain amount of pixels that are greater than 0, or gr sorry, greater than 10, I am dividing everything here by 100. So if there is an area with when I sum all those pixels and divide them by 100 is greater than 10, I will assign 255 to all of them. So you can play with this part. I, this is not strictly necessary for the algorithm or for classification. I prefer to have it because it, uh, I think it's very illustrative and it shows how to loop through all the pixels and all the parts in an image. In fact, I'm not looping through pixel by pixel. I am pixel, I am looping through several windows that I define and they have this size. So I am defining this size for every window and then I'm looping through all the windows that I can apply in the image and I am filling the white pixels. So the images that I will I will get will be more robust because it won't contain all that noise inside. So that's pretty much it. And after I do that, I run the prediction using the predict command. You can see that I'm flattening every image. This is what I what I had originally shown. So uh, when I'm flattening and reshaping to 1, 133 and 10, that's pretty much what I want. So let's see how the algorithm looks like on real-time video now. So this is my camera, hopefully. So it detects a pistol symbol, detects the piece. It detects the high, it detects the fist, it detects the hand glues. So let's start again. Pistol, piece, high. The high, which is interestingly the one that is having more problems to identify. But anyway, it detects it. So high, hand glues. It, it's, it, it is confusing the high and the hang loose sometimes, but anyway, so we have the hang loose and then we have the fist uh, remaining, which hopefully, um, so we have the fist there. So uh, we have used OpenCV to process uh, real time video and we have loaded a very, very simple random forest using um, using scikit-learn. So we predicted the value that is appearing on every image. And this is very cool for predicting gestures. So you can extend this methodology to any gesture that you want. So in order to download these materials and these images, you can check the Udemy coupon code that I provide below, which has a, a huge discount. So there I show all the all the code and I, I share all the, all the proper images for training.